as blockchain starts starts getting more integrated into how trading happens and how in-game items have actual value I, I expect we will see players making money in the form of either crypto or these in-game items some of these crypto networks provide value to their participants by giving them tokens Hello all the blockchain enthusiasts out there, my name is Paul Gadi, I am the CTO and co-founder of Alto.io and the technical director and co-founder of Altitude Games. I have 15 years of experience in game development and today I'll be talking about how blockchain is the perfect fit for the gaming industry, only here on Blockchain Beyond. Blockchain and gaming are actually a perfect fit for each other for a lot of ways. There are so many ways that um, the blockchain can help uh, the gaming industry grow. I think one of the best ways for us to look at it is to look at how blockchain initially evolved. The initial use case of blockchain was uh, for Bitcoin, which is a virtual currency. And games since more than 15 years ago have already been using virtual currency in, in their economies. And now with blockchain, we've seen like similar to how the blockchain has been able to disrupt financial systems. We see the blockchain also doing the same thing to virtual economies, like introducing new things just uh, such as decentralization, governance and open economies. So uh, that's just one thing. And uh, I guess we'll discuss more about other components that will be disrupted by the blockchain once it starts integrating it into the games that we play now. Yeah, when I, um, like out of college, I really knew that I wanted to make games. So I specifically got a computer science degree because I wanted to make games. That was in around 2002. And during that time, there weren't really a lot of game development companies. So um, uh, what I did first was I worked in a telco, which had a division in mobile games. That was my intro to uh, the game industry. And during the course of my career there, I got to meet a few of the game developers also in the Philippines. And um, some of them are actually my co-founders now in, in Altitude and Alto. And so out of that initial seed of like learning to make games, that's when we started the company. Making a game is fun, but it's actually quite hard. Uh, there are a lot of components that goes into it and it's very multidisciplinary like you will need a team of developers artists uh, game designers community managers um, and uh, right now with the blockchain since we're introducing a new component like economies we need uh, economists also and, and some psychologists as well right now when you're making a game like battle racers which has uh, a free-to-play component but also a blockchain component where people pay to, to, to play. It's a new dynamic. There's a lot of things that you need to learn as you go along but there's a lot of things also that you can learn from like mobile game development and computer game development as well. So it's, it's fun, it's hard but it's really exciting. The game industry is pretty big, there's a lot of uh, people making money and fraud really is a concern, especially when people want to trade these items which have actual value. An example I can give is um, there's this game before that pioneered virtual economies called Team Fortress 2 and in that game people can really trade uh, their items for real money. So what happened there is uh, these people would find brokers or like uh, third party uh, handlers that would be the ones taking care of transferring money, fiat money into the ecosystem. So it's really great market and there's a real great chance of fraud happening because of that. And now with blockchain, with these uh, systems that are secured by math, by, uh, by nodes, by networks, we'll be able to add trust into the system without making it more trustless, without adding a lot of uh, barriers. 
and yeah, and once blockchain goes into these virtual economies and in-game trading happens, I think there will be a bigger boom in in virtual item trading, and there will be also uh, the possibility of in-game cross-game item trading as well, where people can trade their items and use them on other games. And we've seen that happen now in blockchain games. As a player, people now can now make money playing games, doing the thing that they love. And uh, most of it right now is mostly either through esports. If you're good enough in the game, you'll be able to win tournaments and earn money. And another is uh, streaming. As you play the game, people watch and you'll earn from the ads. And um, right now, like actually playing a game and earning money from it, uh, like through in-game items, for example, isn't as clear-cut. Because I mentioned before that uh, these gray markets aren't very secure. Um, but as, uh, as blockchain starts, starts getting more integrated into how trading happens and how in-game items have actual value, I, I expect we will see players making money in the form of either crypto or these in-game items. Some of these crypto networks provide value to their participants by giving them tokens, for example. Um, and so we will see more value going in through these crypto economies towards the game industry. Like if you're an esports player, for example, most of the time, how you'll earn fiat money from it is from a salary or, or winning tournaments. Monetizing wins themselves aren't usually done, but mostly through these tournaments. That's interesting because what if we could use the blockchain to, to keep track of this, these wins on like a ledger, and then you can earn cryptocurrency as you win. So that's easily done using these, these smart contracts, using these tokens. Like if you take that further, there are a lot of other things that we can do once we start integrating how the game systems work on blockchain. Yeah, I see that happening. For example, our company Alto.io, what we do is we provide people uh, the service to be able to create these smart contracts and build like the technology that allows them to use it. Because uh, as game developers, what you want to do is to make these games and you don't really want to handle the complexity of dealing with crypto networks, for example. So th there will be a market for that. What I imagine though is there will be middleware providers that will do the smart contract development for these companies. And there will be gaming specific uh, ecosystems that will do this for them and we see that happening also with some of the some of the partners that we work with like Loom and Engine that have their tokens and SDKs A big challenge with games also is UX like all these wallets, they have different UX, it's not standard. You need to know a lot about how wallets or crypto works to be able to use them. So if you want like the critical mass market of game players to be using crypto, we would need to take care of that UX problem. Um, another is um, the walled gardens. I mentioned before that um, like virtual economies usually aren't open. The game developers don't really know yet how to create open economies. So once the technology matures enough and we know enough how to make games on these, uh, on these technologies and markets, then I think that will be the, the catalyst for that. If we look at like the scope of games on blockchain right now, at a very early stage, uh, you see a lot of like games that aren't really completed yet, and you see a lot of them that are mostly just you interacting with a smart contract. Blockchain is a bit of a limiter right now because it's a new technology. Like uh, for example, you mentioned engines earlier like Unity and Godot. And these engines have been in development for years. People know how to use them. There's a lot of infrastructure behind it. 
but with blockchain a lot of this is still being brought up so in turn the games that you see being made aren't that mature yet but i think the challenge more is rather that we don't know yet how to design games around this new limitation for example um, like we see a lot of developers trying to put their databases on blockchains or their cdns content delivery networks when blockchains really aren't the technology for that blockchain is more like a technology for governance technology for uh, for a ledger of truth a source of truth a source of provenance and um, if you design your game or your system around that technology knowing the limitations of the technology and what we need to use it for then i think that's when we'll see like games that we haven't seen before yes i believe so we see a lot of the games being made now that aren't really uh, aimed specifically for like uh, people coming from those that don't have any blockchain experience so if we start with creating hybrid games for example um, simple mobile games that have uh, that don't really have crypto yet in them or blockchain but eventually you'll learn about it through the game then I think that's a better pathway for for us to introduce people into uh, into the blockchain economies So uh, if you want to look at games that do this hybrid approach of being aimed at free-to-play players first and then getting them into the blockchain, um, some good examples would be uh, Relentless by Loom Studio. Uh, our game Battle Racers also. And um, it's a good idea to also look at some of the games that are running on Engine because some of them are free-to-play games that once you get to understand how crypto works, that's when you go dive into the crypto economies. So in terms of active users, our game Battle Racers has around 200 uh, uh, active wallets. So Battle Racers is a game that's currently in development. The initial entry point for it was players taking part in our pre-sale of chests, wherein they buy car parts that they use in the game. For now, we envision it to, to be played first by our initial users, but as we open the, the game to beta users, we see it being played by, by more free-to-pay players and possibly uh, go into the same numbers as our mobile games, which go from the thousands to some million downloads. The basic idea is, if you know remote-controlled cars uh, that people collect and tune themselves, so Battle Racers is very similar to that. People buy these car parts and then they they put them together to the customizations that they like and then they race against other other people and uh, during the game you have the option to use uh, several weapons to counter your your other co-racers and also you can use like other like equipment in your car to make it go faster for example or to defend itself battle racers is like a remote controlled car racing game but it's built and played on, on a web browser on the central land, which is a VR platform. So Altitude Games, we've been making games for more than five years, and uh, we started making them on mobile. As we made games throughout the years, we realized that you need to move with the technologies. And we really see that blockchain is one of the great disruptors that will change games, both how we play and we create games. So what we want Altitude Games to be in the next few years is really to be the pioneer in making these blockchain games. We want to innovate in the, the genres that you see, but also still bring the best practices that we've learned from mobile to be able to make games that are accessible and fun for, for the normal players.
Yeah, for sure, esports would be one of the first um, industries like like related to gaming that will be affected by the blockchain. We talked earlier about monetizing wins that that would possibly change how rewards are given out to esports, and I think. At, at least in, the, in that very near term, that's what's going to happen. Like we will see a lot of um, value going from these crypto networks into esports. Because I think that's the easiest integration needed. We already have the, the systems for transferring value over on these chains, and it would be simple to integrate them into esports. But um, I think in the long term, what's more interesting is how blockchain affects not just like value transfer, but also uh, governance. You see a lot of these uh, chains right now, or these companies on the blockchain, doing things called uh, decentralized autonomous organizations, or DAO, which is essentially empowering your users to create governance around the ecosystem. So if we take that to like what uh, esports is now, for example, tournaments are defined by just the developer or the publisher. What if we allow the players some sort of governance as well? So blockchain will really affect esports, uh, not just esports and other gaming genres as well. We should look more past the, the value transfer and what the technology can actually like really do deep into the infrastructures. I think right now we're at a crossroads in blockchain. I see maybe two camps like or two extremes. Like some people see the blockchain as its initial use case, which is people seeing it as a way to change financial systems. And there are people who look at blockchain and see that it's a new technology, it decentralizes infrastructures, and it changes how the power structures are in, in current systems. So I think it will be like somewhere between the two. But personally, what I would want to see on blockchain is uh, as a, as a developer and a game player myself, what I want to see in the blockchain in games is that it empowers developers and players more to get value from the industry that they love, right? Like, if you're playing games, you earn more from it. If you're creating games, then it's not the app stores or it's not the, the publishers that make most of the, the value, but the developers and creators themselves. So I envision in the next few years that uh, with the help of companies like us, like Alto, like Blockchain Zoo, building stuff on the blockchain that uh, helps developers, we would create more valuable ecosystem for, for the people that are creating and playing the games rather than those who are controlling the stores and ad networks. So I think blockchain already has changed the world. Um, uh, firstly, Bitcoin has decentralized finance. In our field, specifically, we see um, we see some developers starting to realize that there's a new way of getting value into their games. There's a new way of building these games as well. I think in the future, once the blockchain becomes more understood by developers, by players, we will see how games are played and and created really change. Now, if you look at games, and if you look at how the how people make money from it, for example, a lot of it is through like ad networks, in-app purchases, and it's really about monetizing attention. What a good thing about blockchain is we started to take a deeper look at these monetary systems and where value is created and how it flows. And what would I would personally like blockchain to do is for people to re-examine these networks we examine where power lies in the game industry, for example, and really try to drive value towards where the creators and the players are, are earning more from, from doing the things that they love. I think right now it's a, it's a really good opportunity for people building on blockchain. We see a lot of um, it, the, the technical knowledge to get into it is still pretty high. So 
as I mentioned, game developers really want to make games rather than make these kinds of systems. And right now, if you're someone who knows how to do these things, then it's very valuable for both these developers and the ecosystem as a whole. So for now, it's a good idea to start looking at it. Eventually, I think, um, similar to how we see languages like JavaScript become something that everyone needs to learn. I think someday, developers will need to learn how to use the systems themselves and eventually like this knowledge will trickle down everywhere but for now building on blockchain and learning how to build on them is really an important and very valuable service that companies can provide thank you guys that was my explanation on blockchain and the gaming industry if you want to know more about what we do on blockchain you can visit alto.io if you want to know more about our game battle racers you can go to battleracers.io and if you're curious about blockchain and want to know more, you should follow Blockchain Zoo's social media and also subscribe to their YouTube channel. See you again somewhere.